Our next task is to do a confirmatory factor analysis, which involves a whole bunch of stuff. So let's get going. The first thing we need to do is put our pattern matrix into our Amos program. Now there's an easy way and a hard way. The easy way is to use my plugin, the hard way is to build it by hand. If you were to build it by hand, here's how it would go, roughly. Um, you would open Amos, which I need to open, let's see, Amos. There it is. And let me go ahead and do a new model. Okay, and what you would do is you'd get this candelabra thing, single click it, and then out here drag click to whatever size you feel is appropriate for your latent factor and then single click one two three however many we need looks like we need for decision quality we need one two three four five of these items four five and then for information acquisition we need five again one two three four five click a typical use one two three four five you get the idea and then i rotate them do, do so they're all to the left for now and then I'd covary them easy way to do that is select each one of them and do plugins draw covariances <laughs> of course it makes it ugly for us undo that and we'll just do it manually okay it only draws clockwise by the way and make sure you get them all covaried and I'd move them all around let me deselect all use the fire truck and the balloons to make them symmetric and I'd move them all together like this something like that and i'd have my oh then i gotta do this i have to go grab my data where's that data downloads here we go trim to no missing open okay and then i'd click on this and i'd pull in each of those things so atypical use would go here oh and then it's ugly because it has all those labels so i'd have to fix that it is such a pain in the rear. Anyway, how you fix the labels is you go to View Interface Properties, and then on the MISC tab, don't display variable labels. Hit Apply, and Close. It makes it into those. They're still too big, so I'd go to Plugins, and I'd resize Observe Variables. There we go. Then I got to name this as a tip use no spaces allowed in latent factor uh, variable names. And then I'd have to name all of the error variables, which I better do after I name all the other variables. Otherwise, this happens. Name unobserved, and it's going to name these F1 and F2 for you. So you'd have to rename these guys to whatever they are. Anyway, that's how you'd make it by hand. For those of you for whom the plugin does not work, and for those of you for whom it does not work, I'm very sorry. Um, I wish I knew why. For the rest of you lucky few, or lucky majority, hopefully, you can use my plugin. I'm going to close Amos. You're going to go to StatWiki, go to the home page, or any page really, um, and you're going to right click, not left click, you're going to right click the Amos EFA to CFA plugin. Right click it, save link as. Yours might say download as or save as or something like that. Go save link as, and I'm going to save it just in the downloads folder. Let's see, downloads pattern matrix model builder and I'm going to get rid of this one here there you go dot dll save and then I'm going to go view that folder so go to my downloads folder which is right here and I'm going to right click it properties and I'm going to unblock it if you don't unblock it it will not work some of you might not have this unblock option that means it's already unblocked so you don't need to worry about it for those of you for whom this is an issue unblock hit ok it's now unblocked and now and only now after it's been unblocked stick it in your amos plugins folder where is that you might say it is over here in c program files 86 for the most for most of you ibm spss amos and then whichever version you're currently running i'm running version 23 right now so i'm going to open up 23 and there's the plugins folder. I'm going to drag this into that plugins folder. Okay. As long as I'm doing this, let me do it for these other few. I need the CLF plugin as well. So I'm going to right click CLF plugin. I'm going to save link as. Same place as before, clf.bb, save. Now this file shouldn't be blocked. So let me just right click it to make sure. Properties, 
Oh, it is blocked. So unblock, OK, and then drag it back into the plugins folder. And then the last one is the Amos A and B estimate. Right click, save link as. Yep, we'll call it that is fine. Save and go back to that folder. Here it is right here. Uh, this shouldn't be blocked. Properties, oh, it is. So unblock. OK. And where should you stick this? This shouldn't go in the plugins folder because it's not a plugin. Um, it should go in somewhere else. I am just going to stick it in my Amos 23 folder. OK, so now it's in there. And now we're good. We have all the plugins. You might also now, if you haven't yet, go download the Excel Stats Tools package. Uh, you should just be able to left click this one. OK, back to Amos uh, SPSS. So we have this pattern matrix. I'm going to right click it and copy. If for you the left column is filled with variable labels instead of variable names, this will pose a problem. These need to be variable names. Oof. The way to switch this, go to Edit, Options, and in the variable lists, do names. In the output, do names and names in the pivot tables. Um, and then hit OK. It's going to reset everything. You have to redo the, um, the EFA, just the final one, and then it should be good. OK. So, copy. And then over in Amos, let me open up Amos. I'll push this to the side. I'm going to go to data, get the right data. It's this one, no missing. And hit OK. And then plugins, I'm going to do, you should have new plugins now. I'm going to do the pattern matrix model builder. I'm just going to paste all of that in there. It's Control V for me. And hit create diagram. Also, if you have Instead of decimals, you have commas. That might throw it off. I know a lot of countries use commas, um, so that could be a problem. All right, so it just builds it for you and sizes it all for you and positions it all for you. It's very, very nice. Uh, the only thing it doesn't do for you is guess the variable names for the latent variables. So that's one thing we need to change. So I'm going to double click this. Instead of variable named one, we're going to call it useful because that's what these are. And then I'm going to click on the next one instead of two. It's going to be joy. OK, now they're all named. And we should save. Let's save. We're going to save this. Let's just save it. I'm in the downloads folder right now. I'm going to stay in there for now. Downloads. OK, and this is my CFA initial. Nothing changed. No, uh, no special features, just my initial CFA. All right. The first thing we need to do is listed right here. Okay, obtain a roughly decent model quickly. So just look at model fit, look at validity, see if they're good, um, and then move on. So let's do that. To do that, click on the analysis properties, and in the output, we want standardized estimates and modification indices, and that should be good for now. We then save and run. And hope it runs. An error occurred. Ah! An error occurred while attempting to fit the model. These error um, boxes are really good, usually, actually, in Amos. Uh, read them, they'll tell you what the problem is and how to fix it. So, they, so this says that there was an error because I had missing observations, so I have to explicitly estimate means and intercepts. Huh. So if I wanted to just fix this in Amos, I just check the box for estimate means and intercepts in the analysis properties window. But I don't want to do that. I would like to have no missing data. I thought we replaced it all. Let's go double check. So in, in SPSS, first off, make sure it's been saved. Ooh, that might be the problem. Maybe we just didn't save it. So let's save it. But just to double check, let's go do frequencies again. And for all of the variables, we'll do frequencies. I don't need the frequencies tables. Hit OK. And I just get this right here. And if I just scan across it, uh-oh. There it is, that one. Okay, um, I'll go back. That's the only one. Information acquisition three. Apparently, I didn't impute that. Did we catch that before? If I go back to here, and boom, 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 boom. Oh, there it is. Information acquisition three. We just happened to miss it. So, darn. I'll go back and fix this, and we'll get going from there. Okay, and then save, and then go back to Amos, 
and then make sure to, after you save the SPSS file, go re-link it. Double click this, go get that data again, and open, because it will need to update it. Then save again, and then run again, and ta-da, it worked, woohoo! All right, so we're just gonna look at this. Uh, we're gonna eyeball it real quick, because we're just doing a rough model to start. And as we look at these, we want these values to average out above 0.7. It looks like that one looks fabulous. That one looks fabulous. If you can't see these, they're like 0.8s, 0.7s. Um, again, 0.8s, 0.7s. The one we were struggling with was information acquisition. I go down here, look at that. That 0.4 jumped to a 0.6. That is awesome. If you want to be able to see it a little bit better, you can use this little swervy thing. Click that and click that. There it is. It's a 0.6. So we're looking pretty good in terms of convergent validity. If we want to know about discriminant validity, let's look at these diagonal covariance errors, or correlations in this case, and the correlations should be less than about 0.8. And we're doing pretty good everywhere. The only high one is 0.75, and again, that's between decision quality and information acquisition, which we expected, so we're doing pretty good there. Um, that's good. Let's check model fit to see if we have a good model there. Go look at the output. And let me open this up, go look at model fit, and we have a CFI of 934, not too bad, and a P-close, not where we want it to be. Uh, RMSEA is less than 0.06, but uh, not less than 0.05, and this really ought to be above 0.05. Um, back up the CFI, this ought to be greater than 0.95, but I should mention that um, these values do depend a lot on the sample size. We have a sample size of 380. That's a large sample size. And so that's going to inflate the chi-square. If we go back to here, you can see the chi-square is 1,000. 12, it's 1,200. So that's fairly large chi-square. Also, the complexity of the model will inflate the chi-square. Um, from our model, as you can see, we it is fairly complex. Lots of variables, lots of parameters. That inflates the chi-square. Look at all those degrees of freedom. So I wouldn't say that's bad. That's pretty good. If I wanted to make it better, I could go look at the modification indices. Go look for the biggest one. Oh, well, that's a lot. Let me narrow this down. Go back here, analysis properties, in the output for modification indices, changes from a 4 to like 20. Uh, and what that's going to do is it's just going to uh, set invisible any modification indices that are less than 20. There we go. Now we see just the big ones. And the biggest one is E13 to E14. Well, let's see. E13 to E14 is Joy 6 and 7. Most likely scenario, these are highly similar items, and they got to the end of that section of the survey, and they're like, oh, another Joy item just answers the same way. So you can either delete 7 or just covary these errors. So I'll just do that. Um, if you can avoid it, it is good to uh, not covary errors, although there is justification for it. If you look at the references section of the stat wiki, um, I have a reference for that on Dave Kenny's website. So, back to model fit. 0.94, modification indices. I'm really looking to push this up above 0.95, and then I'll call it good. The next biggest one is this one, uh, E19 and 20. Let's see if we can covary those. Same issue here, they're right next to each other on the survey, and they're towards the end of that um, set of questions in the survey. So there's a systematic reason for their, um, or there's a logical reason for their systematic relationship. Model fit, 0.948, ooh, I'm darn close. And 45, E3 and 4. E3 and 4, same issue here, right next to each other on the survey. Similar, similarly worded questions, no doubt. And model fit, 0.4. 9, uh, 0.954. Go down to P close, looking fabulous at 0.817 and RMCA less than 0.05. We're doing great. So we're going to call that good. Um, we're not reporting any of that yet. We're just eyeballing it. Again, if I want to make sure validities are good, I can now that I've changed these uh, little bits and pieces here by adding covariance errors, I can go back and look at these. Nothing looks to have changed drastically. So we're good. That is only the first item on this list. Next, configurable and metric invariance tests. All right, this is if we're using a grouping variable for uh, multi-group analyses later on, which we are. If we go back to our model down here, our multi-group is gender, so we need to do a, an invariance test by gender. Uh, 
Now there are several different types of invariants. There's scalar, intercept, um, configurable, metric, all sorts of stuff. We're just going to do these two and call it good. To do a configurable invariance test, let me save this first. Okay. Now we're going to create two groups, one for each of those uh, genders. So male, new, female, oop, female, there we go, and close. Again, that was just up here. We need to set data for both of those. We already have it for male. Let's set it for female. Same data set. And for the grouping variable, it's gender. Uh, and the grouping value for male is one Group, uh, grouping variable for females. I just click in here and hit G and it jumps me down to gender. Hit OK. Grouping value is two. We have far fewer females than males in this case. Hit OK. Just something to note. And hit OK. And save as. Okay. Save as instead of CFA initial, we are on CFA invariance. Okay. And to test configurable invariance, you have a freely estimated model and you run it. And look at the model fit. A freely estimated model with two groups, I should mention. And it gives you model fit across the two groups. So our model fit will have changed. You can see our chi-square has inflated even more because we have two groups. Now if we go to model fit, check the model fit, 0.932, not too bad. Go down to the um, RMSEA, looks great. P-close looks great. I'm going to check also the SRMR. But these should be sufficient right here. But I'm going to check the SRMR just to be sure. Plugins, standardized RMR. Nothing happens because you have to hit run while that window is open. And look at this. It is less than 0 0.08, which I believe is a threshold. Um, but it's, it's definitely under whatever the threshold is. So we're good. 0 0.0412. We have good configurable invariance. What would I report in this case? I would say we did a configurable invariance test and obtained uh, adequate goodness of fit when estimating a freely, or when, when, um, when analyzing a freely estimated model across two groups. And then maybe in parentheses, I'd stick uh, the CFI and SRMR and RMCA. And that's my evidence of configurable invariance. Now for metric invariance, you want to see if Forcing these groups together is substantially substantially different than letting be estimated freely. So freely, we have a chi-square degrees of freedom of 1905 and 1152. In the stats tools package, if you'd like to use that, you can. You would go to the chi-square difference tab, and you'd stick those values in. Those values, 1905. This is the unconstrained model, 1905, and 1152 and then I'd go do a fully constrained model. I am going to save this. It's already saved. Here we go. Plugins. I'm going to name parameters almost. I'm actually going to move this constraint. Um, double click each latent variable. Go to the parameters tab. Type 1 for the variance. Click 1, click 1, click 1, click 1, click 1 and then remove it from the regression line here. Uh, this will become important in just a moment. What it's going to do is we're going to name. What this does is it allows us to name the regression lines and then constrain them. So we're going to name parameters and we're going to name the regression weights. Hit OK. Now they're all named and they're forced to be equal across groups. You can see they're named the same thing across groups, which tells Amos that they are the same, i.e. constraining them to be equal. If we run this now, we'll get a different chi-square degrees of freedom. Here we go, 1930 and 1188. So I'll stick those in here, 1930 and 1188. And the answer is they are not different. They are so not different, um, metrically speaking. So the measures are the same across groups. Um, if this p-value were significant, then they would not be invariant, meaning they would be different. And then we'd have to figure out why, which is a pain in the rear. Um, but essentially what we'd have to do is go look at each of these paths and see which one differs the most based on gender by toggling back and forth here. Or just go to the output and compare those tables. You can go click on um, regression weights or standardized regression weights. Copy this over to Excel. Let me do a new tab here. 
paste that in here, that's for male, and then I go click down here on female, grab the same table, copy it over, paste it here, and then I do a little difference, maybe call this delta, and equals this minus this, and see which one is the most different. In our case, there aren't going to be a lot of real different ones because these were metrically invariant. But um, if I wanted to, I could probably sort on this column. Let's see, sort, will it let me? Yep, it did. And the biggest difference we have is on uh, joy three. And so if I were metrically invariant, I might go do a, um, I might try, or if we, if we were metrically not invariant, um, if the p-value here were significant, I might go and uh, remove joy three and see if that fixed the problem and go from there. Okay, that's metric invariance. And I think I'm gonna stop the video here and then we'll do these last uh, few in a new video. Actually, first, what would you report for metric invariance? You would say, we did a metric invariance test by constraining the two models to be equal and did a chi-score difference test between the fully constrained and unconstrained models and found them to be invariant, p-value equals whatever we had there, um, 0.916. Ta-da, we are invariant both configurally and metrically. Okay.